Hello everyone, and when you're asked a question, why destroy such a beauty like this? There are a lot of answers as to why. With an interesting portion, as you can see in the picture too, of what I'm doing to my 3970X is basically lapping it down. When they solder these CPUs, what ends up happening is there is a almost like a lake that basically forms in the very center. So when you're putting the direct portion of the thermal face, if you watch Gaming Nexus or Bearded Hardware, they show how you can lap this thing down to copper and get it perfectly. But I was able to increase my scores with a very MacGyver technique that was risque, but I took the chance because of the bravery of those two doing it, and I figured why not. Upon that, I was able to find a defect in the situation that made me downright look at MacGyver as a situation of the channel going like, well, what am I going to do to MacGyver to not try to deface this beauty, but show the true beauty of this with chivalry? Now, I may not do this exactly like old Angus MacGyver, but at the situation of the reason why I defaced my 3970X was for temperature performance for overclocking. What ends up happening is when you have the lake, what I was basically explaining in the situation, you end up performing a point of causing a thermal difference in the CPU that could pretty much just like over burn it in the center because basically what happens is there's air and it blows out. And you can obviously see that when you basically take the CPU part. Now I wanted to take a moment to shout both these guys out for a wonderful job that they did and the awesome knowledge that they passed on. So if you haven't already subscribed to these two, you definitely should. I'll leave a link down below. But the getting to the point of what fixed my 3970X after I destroyed it, basically. As you can see in day one, it was perfect. Then I pretty much do this at this point in time and continue to go down. The portion that I end up discovering is that you can see at the very corner, there's a stamp that they put in this generation of Threadripper. And that's completely different than any other generation of Threadripper than ever really put a stamp. Now, people can say like, hey, the edges aren't gonna be too much. The point is the contact material in between the center. And because they solder it, it goes exactly like this. As they press down on the solder, it kind of warps the actual physical heat sink surface that's going to basically mate with that with the thermal face that's supposed to have that but if you see that corner that stamping when they're stamping that down below that's great but it's pushing it up just a little bit of the high rise and the reason why i figured this out was basically the thermal out blown portion of what happened was it would always be out towards that situation so you'd have the little lake portion that would heat up when you'd overclock it form this bubble and then it would just shoot the thermal paste out the little high ridge that was basically happening and the reason why i figured this out was because i watched their video and i was like you know what i really want to actually do that to my cpu anyways because i had him like a situation where I was pulling apart my heat sink and it kind of lightly scratched the top of the surface and it wasn't bad it wasn't anything that was just like end of the world end of the CPU it still performed really well but I started to surface this out and then I started to notice that, that corner started to show copper first over the other ones and then when I started to get a straight bar that you want to do in order to shine light between it to make sure that the surface is basically even because otherwise it defeats the purpose of sanding it down and you're just basically carving new CPU art for you to put in the museum and not in a CPU socket. But this was successful because I was able to gain a really good over room head and uh, overclocking. It's consistent. The temperatures are now lower and very consistent and steady. And it's not drastically lower, but where I was playing before, it was very temperamental. And now I finally have the temperature and headroom I want, and I can even make it even better. I'm going to be making a follow-up video of basically how to mirror finish this at this point in time, because if I've already gotten this result as is, I'm gonna get a little bit more headroom, but it's gonna look really nice, make me feel really better. But I'm gonna make a follow-up video and showing people how to do that and that situation and if you want to take the bravery now understand that this will void your warranty and i understand that there probably is going to be a plethora of dislikes with the situation of why did you do this the reason why i did this is because when overclocking and performance and consistency i want my thing to run completely perfect and it's not fair to have one die core run hotter than the other ones dancing around it to keep it cool you want all dies just working in a tandem functionality so i mean you basically got to look at it like this when you have the GPUs and CPUs made, you have all these, they're supposed to be durable, but then they just basically dump this big little divot inside of there that you only notice when you start doing overclocking, the durability, even with the lasering that they do on top. You gotta look at it like this. We're in this valley, right? 
and the grass and the house and then you have the laser is the the water right well you have the aluminum plating that was originally on top of there and that's not really going to cost too much of a situation and yeah the house might be a little bit of a situation of maybe like i don't know pitting here and there or any kind of thermal inconsistencies but it's minute it's so minute you can't even basically see it because if you're on top of that mountain behind us that's where we're starting to see where quadrant four that I basically put with that stamp portion. If you go quadrant for the top, left, right, bottom, and so on, you basically have Brooklyn into four quadrants. So quadrant four on the very bottom that I basically named where that stamp goes into, it's like that mountain above where it's basically causing a high rise to kind of go like that. Even though as like the sinking portion of this valley would be, would be the defect of their soldering putting on there and it's not really their fault that's how they're doing that situation in a sta fast standpoint i mean they can rectify this very easily by just like laving the top and then just basically mirror polishing it and then lasering and printing if they want like right before it because as they carve it off it'll still be there and it'll have a very smooth surface which will actually getting towards the very end of it but looking at this point you can see why i took my beautiful 3970x and had to basically mill it down so it got rid of the pitting and i used the straight bar yet again in order to measure that with the light and i'm going to be even doing a better mirror like finished portion of that portion of another installment i do encourage you guys and guys if you've gotten this far to watch and see exactly my success and see if we can raise the scale of the cpu just up a little bit more i'm hoping for that situation because we went from this and so this, and as you can see, as you start to mill it down very slowly, which took a long time, I had to take my sweet time with this with literally just like a very, very fine nail file and just basically just go very finute upon that situation. And I mean fine, ridiculously fine. And then I got some steel wool in order to polish that up with a nice like lubricant in between there. And it was just monitored down to the point until I got it. But as you can see in that corner where that stamping is, there's the most shine that comes from that, meaning that it's taking off the most. And as I started to mill that over, that's where the copper started to show was right in that area. So that's where the high rise was. So it's almost when I, every single time I looked at that situation where it was right over here where I'm looking at and that situation right over there, it was where the thermal blowout was happening towards the stamp. So if you're taking apart your 3970X and you're noticing that your thermal paste is kind of coming out around from the thread and the Ryzen, the AMD and that stamp and that, that whole serial area, then your CPU might be a little warped right there, unfortunately. And that one, like, I, I don't know if you don't want to do what I did, then definitely see if you can get a refund from AMD. But if not, I mean, it's still going to run really good. Don't get me wrong. It's a beasting freaking cpu this is only if you're overclocking and you're an enthusiast like me and you want an insane consistency i'm not saying that this is bad but i'm saying if this does become some situation where it's like this was something they could have fixed that would be cool if they made good on it but i don't know I'm, I'm just throwing things out there at this point in time for as far as my MacGyver view of it and what your feelings of this. I would like to hear what the community wants to, as well as how they feel about this situation. Are they having problems where it's that big of an issue where you're just like, hey, I really, really want a refund or you know like it doesn't really bother me that much and i'm not going to go out of my way to even do what you did that's very risky and i feel like that's really you know dangerous and it is don't get me wrong i did something very dangerous but at the same time darn it i followed my macgyver instinct and emerged like my sensei and was able to repair the cpu and make it run better and let me show you the results of what i got i mean i could talk all this stuff but numbers are numbers and they don't lie it's literally a language that's beautiful so I used Cinebench in order to run the test consistently prior to it. So this was the regular, just standard, I'm just going to let the system do itself, not overclock at that point in time, and just let its own consistency do itself. And even when doing just this minute point of milling it over and making it mirror like to the point where it's at right now, and I'm even going to go farther in another video that I'll be installing, looking at this result where you, you think that that's pretty decent, right? But the headroom gaining that you're getting from this is actually even better and it consistently holds down temperature.
because the score leaps by at least 320 points going into a very positive portion and where my thermals used to be pretty crazy and this is a snapshot from when I first booted up the system and I was noticing inconsistency in the Celsius. As you can see, basically, as I booted it in right there, the situation kind of gets a little bit more widespread as the situation of temperature, as I bring it a little bit closer, and you can see that 43 Celsius was its normal situation. And for it warming up and starting off, and it started off around like 23, 25, 28, consistently it would go all of a sudden 32, 48. 43 and you know I get it I'm overclocking all cores you know I was like okay this isn't like my 1950x completely different than my 2950x or getting into the beauty of like anything else past that even the WRX series that I played around with with like the 24 core which was pretty cool like you know you could always keep depend on a very refined temperature control as compared to this one I, I couldn't figure it out but now that i was able to basically dial that in even at the state it is right now and i do agree i could do a better thing because it looks mirror like at a certain image but if you go on on you can definitely see where it could be better it can be macgyvered better and i'm going to get it insanely better but the point is if my temperatures have gone from 42 now drop down to about a consistent 32 to 35 i mean maybe if i'm doing something pretty heavy for a long time 38 that's pretty freaking good and quite frankly, that was worth the risk to try to fix $2,000 and make it worth even more was priceless for me. And I think the creators that took the risks, they gave me the courage to do so. So Gaming Nexus, Steve and Bearded Hardware, cheers, brothers. I appreciate you giving me the courage to want to do that because it was daunting. But I literally just took like the time and took the skills and the traits that I had from an automotive background standpoint and was able to make it work better, even in a state that I feel like is not even a hundred percent up to my standards so this is why i destroyed my 3970x and how i brought it back to life even better because of the corner of the physical cpu being high rise because of a stamp that they put on top of it so i would love to hear from the community of people that have these what their opinion is on this what they think do they think it's worth the risk? Do you think it's fun? Did you have fun during this video? Let me know down below. This is your boy MacGyver7 that's signing out. Max saying peace. Thank you so much for this tech time. And I'll see you guys and gals in the near future for more tech related information as well as that really cool video that I mentioned that I'm going to be doing where I'm going to be taking it even further with mirror polishing it even better because I have ordered certain awesome tools that will make it even better. But everyone, have a nice day. I'll see you guys and gals in the near future. And who knows, maybe if you subscribe today, maybe, just maybe, Goku will finally hit a level higher than Super Autonomous Ultra Instinct that isn't a Super Saiyan. That'd be kind of cool, right? I don't know. I'm a sucker for that. But... All DBZ humor and subscription humor side, thank you for spending your time here and investing your time. Viewer discretion was dis basically something I should have said at the very beginning of this because it did show some gruesome things of the 3970X being dismantled. But I appreciate your time and investing inside of this, and I'll bid you adieu and see you in the near future.